Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to be reading in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Now right here in this first uh, part, you'll see that I've highlighted some. What I'm, what I'm going to try to do from here on out, I just thought of this this morning. I hadn't thought of it before, and I apologize for that. But I've been talking about the... Uh, uh, Old Testament having the New Testament concealed and the New Testament the Old the Old Testament revealed. Uh, as I read these, I'm going to try to highlight the verses that come to mind that are uh, spoken of in the New Testament. Uh, and I'll probably go ahead and highlight the ones that I have already have highlighted in my own Bible. Uh, and I don't know if I'll make a differentiation there, but... Uh, anyhow, uh, these are the ones that come to mind as I was going over this before I read it. These are the ones that come to mind that I know are uh, quoted, uh, you know, that come to mind. Uh, so I'm not going to go through and take the time to tell you where they are. Uh, you could look those up if you wanted to. That would be good. Uh, but, of course, that is up to you. But anyway, let's start with today's reading. Exodus chapter 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first. And I will write upon these two tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up into Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, even unto the third and to the fourth generations. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people. And pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I command thee, in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine, and every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest, in earing time, and in harvest thou shalt rest. And thou shalt ob observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. 
thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the firstfruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now I want to stop here just a second. I want you to notice. Remember the first tablets that uh, God gave Moses. God wrote that it said in the scripture, we just read a couple of uh, chapters ago, that God wrote on the tablets with his finger. He wrote those with his finger. Now he's telling Moses. Moses hewed out these tablets. And in other words, he cut them out of the rock. And here Moses is writing the words. He's telling him what to say, but Moses is writing the words. Does that mean that God didn't write them? No. Moses, or God through Moses, wrote these tablets. So there's still a law. There's still the law that was given to the children of Israel. But there's a difference here of what it was the, the first time. See, the first time to me was holier, but the people had rejected them and Moses broke the tablets, so they had to make another. Okay? And he wrote upon the ta tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tab tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and they gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with them. Well, that's the reading for today. So, well, what does that mean about Moses and the veil, his face shining and all like that? Well, here's what it means to me. I know there's other meanings, there's other teachings on this, but, but uh, try this on for size. Whenever you're walking and talking with God, it's not just your dress, it's not just your speech, although both of those go into it. A lot of people have made your dress, uh, how you appear, uh, a big deal. You've got, everybody's got to dress alike. Everybody's got to dress like they were back in the 1800s. All the men have to have on suits and ties and and those kind of things. There's lots of folks that have done that. Uh, my folks have done that as well. But listen to me. Have you ever seen a lawyer? A lawyer dresses up in a suit. Uh, you could take a, a woman that walked the streets and put her in a high neck dress and long sleeves and her dress dragging the floor and she'd still be a, a prostitute, if you will. It's not what is on the outside that makes a difference. It's what's on the inside. And here Moses, he had been with God, and there was a light that shined out from him, if you will, so to speak, that shone on his face that he had been with God. You and I can do that today if we're walking with God. There can be something that that is working on the inside that will show on the outside. Will that affect your dress? Will that affect your speech? Yes, it will. But as far as us making laws, if we can... If we can obey God and walk with God, we're not even going to have to tell people, folks, that, that we're walking with God. They're going to see a light shining out of us that they won't understand, and at least at some point they're going to say, what are you doing? What's going on? 
you know there's something about you and to me that's the way we're supposed to live today yes we're supposed to still honor God's commandments uh, yes we're still supposed to walk with him yes we're still supposed to obey him but let's don't get caught up in the little things although like I've said time and again God is a God of details otherwise there wouldn't be so many details in this book particular so uh, let's walk with God uh, let's not be down on people. The uh, Bible says, judge not, lest ye be judged. The uh, Bible says, with what mercy we meet out, that we'll be judged with that same mercy. So let's just uh, uh, talk to God, walk with God, listen to God. That may be more important than anything. And uh, let him take care of things. God bless you. Talk to you tomorrow.